You don't need a reason to love your art, to love the process, or to enjoy exactly where you are in the art journey right now completely. We are just inclined to think that we need a reason. We have this whole little list of conditions, arbitrarily adopted, usually free from scrutiny, that we expect need to be in place to allow happiness with the practice to be present. The drawing should be going well. The drawing should be in line with our goals. It should represent to one degree or another an improvement over what we've done before, etc., etc. The truth is, we don't need any of that. We don't need any of that to love what we do. You can just feel great about what you're doing because you decide that that's how you're going to handle your life. It's just commonplace but not at all necessary that you let your mood and feelings about your art be determined by all of these arbitrary external factors that are themselves created and conditioned by an endless regression of things utterly out of your control. Even mediocre art is at least a personal and transpersonal miracle. It's a miracle of good luck that you have time to sit down and draw, and it's an existential miracle that drawing is possible with your evolutionary biology, chemistry, and the laws of reality that manifest the world around you. I know we all know that, and I sound stupid reiterating it, but the problem is that we don't live by it. We all go, yes, yes, it's miraculous. We've all thought about that, but let's get down to the good stuff, like feeling like absolute crap about where I sit in the online art hierarchy and wringing my hands over my status amongst my peers. Yuck. This applies to more in life than just art, of course. Have you ever noticed that we all accept it if someone feels bad or bummed or bored for no reason, but we think it's weird if someone starts telling us they feel great for no reason? If a friend of yours starts expressing their boundless contentment with their current situation, flaws included, and that they can make no accounting for their happiness in the face of all the personal and impersonal suffering available in the world around them, it wouldn't be long before most people start eyeing the exit. This is, of course, not great. A short study of drawing, meditation, or self-inquiring contemplation can quickly reveal that Boring old doing nothing you is actually a low-key fountain of positive emotions. Yes, even if you suffer from an insurmountable onslaught of negative thoughts when you sit alone in a room. Because those thoughts are just new things popping up that aren't you and that don't by necessity determine what it feels like to be you. Better yet, it's clear once you discover that that those positive feelings and truthful viewpoints aren't actually covered up by less than satisfactory things that come up in life. They just make it more likely that we'll forget that truth and get caught up thinking we need random life events to hand us our happiness on a silver platter. I personally think we should discuss this a little more often so that it's more likely that people will live in that truth when things get hard. I risk getting out of my lane here on this stuff, of course, but everywhere I look, it seems the foundational things about art are actually foundational things about life, and it's very hard to hide that. But clearly, all of this applies directly to drawing, right? No sequence of failed drawing attempts or career moves, no matter how intense, embarrassing, or prolonged, need have appended the bloody hook that intimately attaches them to ideas of personification and self-worth. They're just stuff. You're free to handle them that way. You are free to handle them just as stuff, even if other people think that's weird. Which is something I, I don't I don't bring that up a lot here, but maybe we should analyze it a little more. I know this stuff is weird. I'm not a fool. I know that friends, family, teachers, peers, They might think it's a little odd that you don't indulge in the commonplace, rational progression of emotional assumptions that make painful feelings feel personal and like you need to let them ruin your day. That's fine. Who cares? Let them think you're weird. you're, You're just weird in a way that makes you less encumbered by the random thoughts and things that come and go as you go about your business. 
And the, the interesting thing is that it also won't be weird for a lot of people in your circle. There are plenty of people probably right around you, maybe living with you, who are living in this way and they're just not inclined to talk about it for one reason or another. I find there's many for whom these things are just temperamentally obvious. They never had to figure out this stuff. It's just always how they dealt with their self-doubt and self-defeating tendencies. And when you bring it up to them, they're like, yeah, well, well, what's the alternative? Wait, what? Some people just let their random self-doubt keep them from doing stuff they like? What? Like they're shocked, you know? They find it super confusing. So I, I would actually encourage you to talk about these, these finer, deeper points, these weird things with more people in your life. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a few people, but I think you will be shocked. I was certainly shocked. I think you'll be shocked how quickly people open up about this stuff and reveal themselves to be weirder than you thought they were or, or give you a new frame of reference for how much freedom you actually have to deal with the things in your life in a different way. And even if they're not doing it with, with art or creativity, you know, maybe they're just people who are exceptionally good at handling the difficult times in life, you know, handling just normal life stress that has nothing to do with a, you know, a creative endeavor or something like that. They can really teach you so much that will apply directly to your drawing practice. I wish I could try to make my points about this particular topic more clearly. That's probably a failure of imagination or preparation on my part, but at a certain point, you really do have to do the impossible and just pick yourself up by your own bootstraps, right? Like if you, if it's going to be true that you do not need any particular reason to love your art or love making it, that can only be true if you make it true. If you just stop trying to quantify it and justify it and just choose to live that way. You've just finally crossed whatever line needed to be crossed where now you're willing to dump a significant amount of your burden and just say, I love doing this stuff and I don't need a reason. It doesn't need to be going great. Any individual piece doesn't need to be great. It doesn't need to be going anywhere. It doesn't need to be perfectly aligning with the track that some genius artist laid out. None of that. You just love it. And that's invincible. If you do it that way, nothing can hurt it. It always floats above anything that could be going wrong, anything painful in the practice. And that is a very worthwhile pursuit. So go for it. Seek your joy, not outside of you and not in the random things that happen in the practice because of everything else that it's connected to in life. Seek your joy on the inside. Decide for yourself that your love of this is unassailable and set that as your real goal. Every moment that you're working, then it doesn't matter what you're working on, who you're working for, the content becomes irrelevant. Now the joy in the practice is always fully available because it is about how you choose to interact with it regardless of everything else that's going on. Give it a try. And thanks for drawing today.